Because it's getting a bit awkward. So. Yeah. I care about how others treat others. So that's the first lesson. Does everyone understand that? Would you like to talk about the Lebanon, Lebanon issue? The debate, you know, the debate of Palestinian issue. Mary's, oh, Mary's been very, very focused on the Palestinian issue. She lived in Lebanon for like nearly three years. And I, I lived in a Palestinian refugee. In a Palestinian so refugee. She has a hands on affinity, affinity so. with this, right? Yeah. And, and she may feel a little angry when she's going through this, so we just let that happen. But um, how does that relate to this issue? I care about how others treat others. So I, um, I felt that. Uh, for a long time in my life that I really care about how others treat others and I um, often got angry living in Australia because I felt like nobody cares about what's happening with other people in the world um, or even in the next suburb and, um, and so I went off to be a volunteer and I, I really loved that experience and I grew a lot personally through it and um, I really uh, connected with this issue of injustice that I saw all around me in my work, where I lived, everything. And, uh, do you want to talk about this? And so when I met AJ, I, um, I had a big thing about boycotting Israeli goods because I felt that that was a loving thing that I could do. I didn't believe in violence, but that was a way of showing my support for people who didn't have any civil rights. Uh, the right to vote, the right, I would talk about the refugees and, um, and actually many Palestinians, um, a right to, to have themselves heard on, on the world stage. And I recognised that is, the Israeli interest was supported by a lot of Western interests and a lot of anti Western sentiment. And I was, I never went to McDonald's and I never drank Coke, but I was like, very, um, I had decided boycott was my way. Um, and uh, we had an interesting uh, altercation in a supermarket once in the UK where he wanted to buy rosemary from Israel. <laughs> she wouldn't let me buy rosemary from Israel. <laughs> rosemary said, wasn't a girl, by the way. <laughs> I had a lot of emotions, not necessarily about the rosemary. Yeah. But, but we, we got to talking about what is actually loving in that situation. Because I felt I had found a loving solution to my concern about, not the solution, but a, a loving way I could demonstrate my care about how others treat others. And um, I was quite resistant to hearing that that wasn't necessarily the case. But AJ pointed out that I was actually being quite selective and almost punishing of a certain group of people. Um, so if love is impartial, I would love everyone the same. And I said to him, but I'm, I'm not angry at like Jewish people. I'm not angry at Israel. I'm angry at the system that's in place and I want to change the system. And he said, yeah, no. <laughs> well, first of all, she was angry with the group in Israel. And it's because of her first century emotion. Right, and then secondly, um, changing the system doesn't get the system doesn't get changed by you adding fear to it or you adding anger to it. And that is what I was doing. So he said something that I had believed to be true for a lot of my life, um, but I had given up on um, during my time actually living in Lebanon, and that was if I changed my soul condition then that is the most powerful thing I can do for this planet. And I had passionately believed that for a lot of my life. But when I lived amongst people who I saw had, had so much injury and so much damage and were so downtrodden, I had given, so I had to deal with a lot of disillusionment with, with love and disillusionment with the world emotions. And that was actually a part of my soul condition that was preventing me from being loving. So that's the divine love way of doing it rather than my natural love of which is 
I feel pretty uh, confident that I think self conditions help me a fair amount of people on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't even notice anymore. Well, for a start, I bought it before I knew about all those kind of things. I don't believe in wasting it. But um, again, the more energy you focus on boycotting, um, changing things through protest, and all of these other things, you're actually giving more to these unloving events, really. You're making them bigger than they are. Because remember, in reality, they're all a reflection of your own soul condition. So the real question we need to ask ourselves on the divine life path with this issue of loving others, others loving others, we can be so judgmental about it. We can say, yeah, see, they were unloving to that person. But what about all the times I've been unloving? Right, with my soul condition, holding on to my soul condition. And I'm not even thinking about that at that moment. So what we need to do is put the focus back on ourselves, right? What inside of me creates the Palestinian Israel system of things? There's emotions inside of you right now that create that. Ask yourself, what are those emotions? Some of you have an emotion of um, prejudicism between one or the other of those two parties. Some of you may have been harmed by an Israeli in your life, and so you have a more of a preference towards Palestinians. Some of you may have been harmed by something in the Arabic system of things, and so then you are feeling more anger towards that. Or many of you are easily influenced by the world's um, media system, which is all driven by some very, very powerful and wealthy men who have the ability to control you through that system. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so you've got to start questioning, all right, do I look at the unloving way that the media presents everything? What inside of me causes me to want to believe that rather than the truth? What emotion in me causes me to do that? If you deal with that emotion in you, you will be one less person who wants this lie. Does that make sense? Yes. And in fact, as you grow in love, you become so powerful with that that hundreds or even thousands or even millions of people around you will start to look at you as a person who's now understanding the truth and they will start trying to accept that truth. How do you go towards ignorance towards it all? So instead of uh, putting some emotion into it, just uh, not uh, associating it with it all together? And that's it. Well, I'm actually suggesting against that too, right? If I want to remain ignorant about how others harm others, then am I being loving? No. no. So what I'm saying is you want to be passionately emotional about all of these things, but realize that the changes begin inside of you without these things. So, so while I have a prejudicism of one race, one color, one gender, one whatever over the other, what am I doing? I am not acting in love. Can I add to that as well? Some of the other emotions that I think are within a lot of us are emotions about an unwillingness to forgive, um, a need to be right, and they are actually core issues within that issue that do contribute to that yeah, judgment. judgment. Yeah. And also, uh, I know quite a few people who watch The Secret and they don't watch the news anymore because that's just giving their attention to negative events. So, but I, I would ask the question, um, what emotion is within you that you cannot bear to see the injustice that does exist in our world because there is a lot of it? So let yourself feel the injustice that's happening in the world. I'm saying let yourself feel it. It will trigger some emotions in you. Let yourself feel that injustice and understand once you've felt those emotions, you'll get to the point where you can actually be loved in every one of those situations. But it is not loving to go and you know do things that are, that are protesting or boycotting or all of those other things. You can do it. You can do it as much as you want. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just saying that often it's driven by an emotion inside of you, not what's going on out there but actually inside of you. So a lot of times what we do is we feel the injustice of one party over the other. That connects with the injustice I feel about my own life, and I feel really passionate about that, not connecting to that emotionally, but I'm feeling passionate about it. And so I 
I'm like a leech in a way, connecting to this group of people or that group of people or that group of people, adding to their emotional condition, wanting an addiction satisfied within myself, when in reality what I need to do is release an emotion. So can everyone see the first issue with the first lesson there? I'm not saying don't be passionate about how others treat others. In fact, I'm saying quite the opposite. Be passionate about how other people treat other people. Right? But deal with it in the divine love way, which is look at myself, see myself, see what I'm creating here in this situation. Because all of us are creating something. Jen? Uh, last week I was talking to a lady friend of mine who was struggling with her own Yeah, but I would make the opposite suggestion to her. Go ahead, feel about it, cry about it, because there's a causal emotion in her that feels attracted to these people's loss. And she needs to feel that emotion. And so my suggestion is watch telly every day and connect to that emotion every day until